This is the Lumix GX85 or GX80, depending on what region you live in. Now, I've had this little guy for about six months now, half a year. And I gotta say, this definitely has to be one of the best bodies for someone that's looking for a compact, everyday type of camera. And also hailed, to me at least, a mini street beast. Stay tuned to find out why. Before we begin, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Brandon and welcome to the channel. So let's first talk about my intentions on picking up this camera and if they met them. So why did I pick up the GX85? So last year I wanted to give a shot at street photography. The issue though was that the camera that I had, which was the Fujifilm X-T4, though it is an amazing camera, the silver accents, the bigger size, it just made me too anxious to take this setup out onto the streets. I wanted something smaller and discreet, but also not too expensive, just because I wouldn't know whether I'd enjoy street photography or not. And it just so happened that the GX85 fit that bill just perfectly. As some of y'all know, Micro Four Thirds bodies alongside their lenses tend to be smaller than their ASPC and full frame counterparts. And I mean that 50 mil, look at that. That's literally a shot of espresso right there. Now to give y'all an example, this is the 17 mil lens made for Micro Four Thirds bodies. And like, look at the size of that. You can literally fit this thing in your palm. So when looking for my first lens for my GX85, as some of y'all know, 35 mil is my favorite focal length, but being micro four thirds, we have to account for the two times crop. Hence why my first lens I picked up for the system was a 17 mil. All right, Brandon, that's great and all, but what do the photos from this camera look like? No, no, you're right, you're right. It only makes sense to show you the images in a camera review. So here they are. These are from the Lumix GX80, GX85, paired with the 17 mil. As you can see from my photos shown here, it did exactly what I needed it for. Everyday casual street photography. All right, so let's go over the pros. First and foremost, it's form factor. The body alone can fit in my pocket and it being this small not only gives me the confidence to head out onto the streets to get the photos I want, but it isn't as noticeable as a bigger camera. With the low key accents, I haven't been stopped by anyone or get as much looks when taking this camera out to shoot. On the other hand, with the X-T4, I cannot say the same because I have been approached or stopped before. The camera also has an electronic viewfinder which I use all the time and a screen that can tilt when wanting to shoot at low angles. The body also features a pop-up internal flash and what's cool is you're also able to point it where you want to, so that way you can get that light shooting at the right angle. It can also shoot in 4K 8-bit up to 30 frames. With that being said, here are some various clips I had shot in 4K. And as you can see, it actually looks quite nice. I do use the 4K as a secondary angle for still shots and or when filming for smaller clients. And of course, only sticking to manual focus. Oh, and did I forget to mention the Stabe? The GX85 has five axes of image stabilization. This is one of Panasonic's strengths and you can see it when both shooting photo and video, especially video though. I shot all my footage with this camera handheld and the wobble just wasn't really there at all. And for its price, you can find used bodies for around $400. Not bad for an entry-level camera. 
All right, all right. So now for one of the most famous topics for Panasonic Lumix cameras, the autofocus. Now from the world I come from, I mainly shoot video, but I can tell y'all that when using this for street photography, it performed really well. But I also wanted to mention, this is when we're gonna transition to the downsides. Okay, Brandon, so the autofocus performs nearly perfect. Like literally, it did everything fine for photography. But I cannot say the same when using the video mode. So yeah, for video, it is pretty much unusable and I would stray away from that. So if you're getting this for video, I really wouldn't recommend that. This is something I'd say that you'd strictly stick to is photography. So yeah, for video, I would say keep it strictly manual because in auto, it is just unusable. So autofocus in photography, good, but autofocus in video, bad. Another downside that may apply to some of you is that this is just a micro four thirds system. What that means is you're gonna be dealing with low light issues and you're just gonna to have to go into a whole new ecosystem of lenses just because it is a different mount. And as for image quality, it isn't the sharpest thing in the world, but this may be actually a pro for some. Like if you were looking at all the images that are coming from this camera, there's this character and vintage like thing that comes with it just because of the natural grain that this camera produces. Okay, so who is this camera for? Who would I recommend it to? Definitely, if you were like me just a few months ago here that wanted to get into street photography but didn't want something too standoffish and something more discreet and very, very low key. Like, this thing is seriously small, y'all. Like, look at this. And the black accents and everything really help just blend into the crowd. And it being not that pricey, it's a good starting point for beginners that want to try out the street photography life or just someone that wants an everyday type of camera because that's what it literally is. It's so lightweight that you can take it with you pretty much everywhere you go. And then my final thoughts, being it my first Micro Four Thirds camera, I can definitely say that I want to stick with the Micro Four Thirds system just because if you're looking at their bodies and especially their lenses, like, it is way smaller and I'm someone that's always on the go and just want to carry something smaller with me in general instead of having to worry about weight and just having a backpack full of heavy lenses. I think I'm definitely sticking to it and I'm looking at more micro four thirds cameras to pick up here in the next couple of months. Also, if you're interested in seeing some of the behind the scenes footage of some of these shots taken here today, I have some point of view videos here on the channel that you can check out when I was shooting with the GX85. And that'll be it. That is my review of the Lumix GX85 slash GX80. I really hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. It would help out a lot. And if you're new here, I invite you to hit that subscribe button to join me and my future adventures. I hope to see y'all next time. Thanks again for watching. Peace.